Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon to people on the West Coast, uh, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, my name is Monica McMahon. I'm here with Ryan Houston. Good morning, afternoon, and evening. <laughs> Um, we are going to make this super short today, in 10 minutes or even 9 minutes, we're going to talk to you about circular networks. So, without further ado, uh, Ryan, are you ready to get started? I'm ready, let's okay, go. Okay, great. So, uh, let's start. What is a circular network? What does it look like? Circular network, they're a nasty little thing when they, uh, when they come up, but I'll show you quickly on the screen what it looks like. So, this obviously is not a circular network. This is something that want to have as one thing, one controller is doing the routing between IP and Ethernet, and the other one is either IP or Ethernet. Where you get into trouble is when you have both of those checked on two controllers. That means there's a path going from the, each controller on Ethernet and the same path on IP. That's a bad thing. There's also another extreme case here that could happen, and I hope that this never ever happens on your site, and this is when you have a, a few more adding MSDP into that chain as well. Now, this is very uncommon, but does happen. Let's hope that never happens on your site. So if it does happen, you should seriously look at who's, who's put that site <laughs> you together. You physically <laughs> wired the controller with two different wires. It's not good. Okay, so that's what a, a circular network looks like. Um, how does that happen? How do you get yourself into a situation where you have this happening? The biggest cause is you have multiple IP Ethernet routers, right? So not every manufacturer has this combination, but some do, and it's as simple as a checkbox on each. Typically, the case there is coming up, you know, doing a migration from Ethernet up into the IP level, and you just missed it or it happens when you have another vendor on site and they decide to they already have Ethernet at IP, now vendor A has Ethernet and IP. Vendor B also does the same thing and bam, circular network. It's quite easy to do. Um, so that's great, now we know how it happens, um, but how if it's happening in a network, what are some of the symptoms? How can we tell that this might be a circular network. What so how, do you, how do you know this is happening? Yeah. That's a great question. Well, there's a few different ways. The controllers in question will probably be unreachable in your network. I mean, think about it. You've got this network traffic going around and around and around, and the controller itself is trying to service this network data over and over and over. So the traffic rate becomes so high that it's all it can do to service it. That probably means that when you're asked, when the server is asking for the controller, it's not going to reach it, so it'll go offline. The, if you're unlucky and you happen to be connected to the network via one of these controllers, it will be unreachable and you will lose your entire network. Some other signs, data exchange, if it's going to one of these controllers, will be lost most likely because, again, the controller won't be able to service it. The network bandwidth in your entire system is going to be drastically reduced. So when the customer complains and he says, hey, wait, my system's running really, really slow, this is probably one of your key go-tos to go figure out if this is actually the problem. Your MSTP networks, if you have any attached to the two controllers that are participating in the circular network, will most likely be impacted as well. For the same reason that the circular network controllers are being consumed in trying to do the traffic, that they can't service the rest of the network. So depending which of your controllers are causing that circular network, it could just have some symptoms within you know, that one device or those two devices, or it could have massive network-wide consequences. Yeah, it could manifest and be all over. So it's, you're going to know if this happens. There's going to be some problems on your network for Possibly sure. Possibly some major ones. Um, so something's going wrong. You're, you may be having major network problems. You think it's a circular network. How do you find it? How do you figure out um, which device is having a problem? And then how do you fix it? Well, the best way is one of the ways I should say to do it is pull up our trust field Wireshark. Who doesn't love Wireshark? <laughs> Wireshark's great. 
get a capture, take a look what's going on. For reference, we did an, an advanced Wireshark webinar two weeks ago that shows this exact example on looking at the capture, determining hall count to figure out if you have a circular network and identify which controllers did it. Now, that's great, but it's a little lengthy. Not everyone can do that through Wireshark. And if you want to find this quickly, then we do have another tool. If only there was a way to find this in some <laughs> advanced analytics way. tool. I wish we could find a way. So you can use visual backnet to do this, and I will show you an example of that. There we go. There we are. Okay, so in this example, we have a network health of 21%. Not really a good thing. Not great. Aiming for 100. Pretty so well. I clicked on the network health score, and it brought us to this screen. You can see right at the top, these checks are in order of severity. Circular network showed up right at the top. This would decrement your network by 40% right off the top. So it's a critical check that needs to be done. When you click on this, you can see you have a couple of vendors in here and it tells you exactly who it's going to be. Oh. We're a bit slow today. A little bit slow today. The what happens is you're going to see the two controllers, you're going to see the IP information, you're going to see the device ID. So it gives you a chance to go back and actually de determine exactly who the controllers are. That is a great piece of information because now instead of going, oh my God, I have a circular network, now why? Because it's great that you found it. <laughs> so I have the IP address, I have the backend device address. Okay, great. Check your network drawing, go find out where they are. Now in order to fix this, you're gonna have to get to the controller and you're going to have to unplug it in most cases. The reason is the controller is way too busy to get to it from any other way. So you need to sever the circular network connection and then go in and fix it. Choose one controller or the other one, whoever is participating, it doesn't matter. But one of them needs to be turned on. Once that's fixed, plug it back on your network and problem solved. Great. So look at that. Kept it under 10 minutes. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know. We're happy to answer more questions about your circular network, about how you can find these individual backnet. Have a great day. Thanks so much for joining us. Watch your check boxes. It's easy to get into. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye.